Hi, I'm Kat, Hello. and I like cars. My name's Ford. Welcome to my channel, where I do car-related content and do car-related things. The Mercedes-Benz R107 chassis was a sports luxury car produced between 1979 and 1989. It was the second longest running model series behind the G-Wagon. It's powered by a variety of V8 engines, ranging from 3.8 all the way up to 5.5 liters of displacement. Now over 200,000 of these units were sold in America alone, and a lot of these luxury cruise liners are still roaming the streets to this day. But like any car, it has its quirks and features. One of those quirks being the odometer just crapping out on you. In this video, I'll show you how to fix that. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. This specific R107 chassis is near and dear to my heart because it's my mom's. It's a 380 SL from 1985 and she's had it for as long as I can remember. It has a foothold in the family and isn't going anywhere anytime soon. That being said, a little while ago, the odometer stopped rolling over and keeping track of the mileage on paper has been somewhat troublesome. So it's my job to take care of this car and fix it. I first started by removing the Mercedes-Benz logo from the steering wheel using a plastic interior tool as not to leave any scratches. I then took a 10 mm Allen head socket and removed the bolt holding the steering wheel to the steering shaft. Those bolts seemed to be always a little tricky to remove as I didn't want to put all the force on the steering lock mechanism. One thing I can't stress enough is to always take pictures of what you're taking apart. It always helps down the road. The steering wheel should just now come off, but if it's stubborn, leave the bolt in and give a few firm taps on the steering wheel rim. Now I take the interior tool from earlier and use it to carefully pry out the gauge cluster, moving around the edges to try and encourage it to fall out. From my experience, this gauge cluster is mostly if not totally held in via friction. Next, I start unplugging and removing every connector on the back of the gauge cluster taking note of what each connector is and where it goes, but being especially careful with the economy meter tube. It is made out of old 80s rubber and operates on a vacuum based system, so it's really important that I don't mess that up. I take the gauge cluster inside to my desk so I can work on it a little more easily. Again, taking pictures to make sure I don't forget where everything goes. I take a 6mm socket and begin removing every bolt that I can see that's holding in the speedometer. There should be four screws holding in the unit itself. Four normal sized screws and then one long screw. I then start removing the small plastic clips holding in the wiring harness for the gauge cluster, illumination, and the passenger side turn signal. Making sure to carefully move the wires out of the way as not to put stress on them. Next, I remove the two long screws holding in the anti-lock brake indicator module, which slides out with ease. Check out that vintage 80s tape holding it in. The speedometer unit should now be easily removable as there's nothing left holding it in. The next step I need to take is removing the white cover on the back of the speedometer unit. It covers the gears that I need to get to to fix. You can see them right there. The white cover is held on by four small screws on the back of the unit. There is also a small capacitor that's held in back there, but I found it to be removed easily when I removed the whole cover itself. Here's another view of those problematic gears. Behind a clear plastic cover held in by two screws and four plastic clips on the accompanying PCB. I removed the two screws and the four plastic clips on the accompanying PCB. This was really tricky and you gotta be careful not to break either part. This is the small gear which is run by an electric motor. That electric motor receives the signal from the speed sensor cable right here. The electric motor is on the opposite side as well as I will now show you. Sometimes corrosion can occur behind the plastic, but as you can see this one does not have any and is very clean. The original style small gear that runs off this motor was a two part system, plastic with a brass fitting inside. As you can see, the plastic has perished and all that is left is the brass fitting. 
I will need to remove this in order to install a new plastic gear. I ended up replacing the other gears as well due to noticeable cracking occurring through their plastics. One thing to keep in mind though is remembering the orientation for the gears when reinstalling. A link to these will be in the description box below. I opted to use bird beaks to remove this brass fitting, but depending on how tight it is for you, you might be able to just pull it off. Now the dowel pin fitment was a little bit different on the new gears I received, but it was smooth enough and the gears ended up locking up well enough that I didn't have to worry about it. But just to make sure, I installed each gear and made sure that the gear fitment was correct. One thing I must note is that depending on where you get your gears from, you may run into fitment issues with the small gear on the odometer motor. I was lucky enough not to need any modification to get it on, but it was a very tight fit. Next, I gotta work on adding some mileage. One quick trip across the US in a couple hours, I opted for a drill at first, but ended up spinning the rest of it by hand, due to a worry about wearing out the plastic gear that I was reusing. Next, I'm lubricating all the gears to make sure that they don't wear out prematurely. Now to clean the plastic cover for the odometer gear assembly. I noticed remnants of the old perished gear along with some rust-like coloring, but nothing a little isopropyl alcohol can't fix. The reinstallation of the plastic cover is just about as tricky as the removal. I ended up flexing the accompanying PCB slightly in order to get the whole thing to fit into place. Next, I reinstalled the small screws that hold the cover onto the speedometer unit, making sure not to tighten them too much as it's still just plastic. Making sure that it's snug is enough to hold it on. I can't forget the small rubber rings that sit around the posts for the cover of the speedometer unit. As the speedometer gauge face was quite dusty, I decided that a quick wipe with a microfiber towel couldn't hurt. Now for the reinstallation of the speedometer unit cover. Lining up the speed sensor pole and the post may require a little bit of shimmying. Next, I reinstall the four small screws, making sure to only make them snug as they're only screwing into old plastic. There's that capacitor, must not forget to reinstall that too. Now that is the odometer gears repaired, but my work wasn't finished yet. I had noticed that the decorative cap inside the left hand gauge had fallen off and I needed to fix that too. So I started removal of the four small screws which held the left hand gauge assembly in. With all the screws removed, the gauge assembly simply lifts out. Another wipe with a microfiber towel to clean off this dusty gauge. I then used a drop of super glue and tried to spread it around with a paper towel to get even coating to put the decorative cap back on. The dust didn't just end on the gauge faces. I decided that I might as well try and wipe out as much as I can from the actual interior plastics of the gauge cluster. Next, the gauge assembly is reinstalled and the four retaining screws snug down into position. Personally, I like to start them by hand before using any tools. I removed this gauge cluster illumination stick while the gauge assembly was out of the cluster. Next, the speedometer unit is ready to go in. I take care while handling the harness for the gauge cluster illumination stick before inserting the speedometer unit. Now the harness is ready to be reinstalled. Inserting the illumination stick and the brightness controller, verifying that it's sitting in its controller stick slot. 
Next, I install the one long screw into the brightness controller before securing the speedometer unit with the other three. Now it's time for the anti-lock brake indicator module to go back in. Unfortunately, I couldn't retain that vintage 80s tape as it wasn't allowing a smooth reinstallation. I then secure the module in with the two long screws. Now I make sure that all the screws holding in the speedometer unit are snugged down. And I can't forget the bulb for the right hand turn signal. And that's it! The gauge cluster is finished, fully put back together and ready to be reinstalled in the car. Look at that beauty. Now that I'm back in the car, the first thing I must do is reconnect that economy gauge tube. Then the rest of the wires plug in easily afterwards. I then line the gauge cluster up and give it a firm push to get it into position. Now it's time for the steering wheel. I look closely to make sure that I'm lining it up right because there was a mark on the inside on the picture that I took earlier in the video. Next I reinstall the 10mm Allen bolt and torque it to 60 foot-pounds. Again, while torquing, I didn't want to put all the stress on the steering lock mechanism, so I used my knees to try to hold the wheel in place. Now the cherry on top, reinstalling the Mercedes-Benz badge. And that's it, the odometer rebuild is finished. Time to take it on a test drive. Like I said before, this specific R107 is near and dear to my heart, and I'm glad that at least one out of the many quirks that this vehicle has is now fixed and is operational again. These cars really do feel like you're riding in the clouds, and now that there's one less thing to worry about, my mom and I can finally enjoy it that little bit more. I'd like to thank you for watching my video, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like or a comment down below. But if you didn't, let me know what to improve on. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.